So now we're going to talk a little bit about how do we start <coughs> actually making these use case diagrams. And we're going to start off by talking about analysis. So going back to our example of the Vic Bank's new ATM system, our first step is going to be to clarify those functional requirements. Then we're going to identify the actors in our system, and then we're going to identify the interactions between them. Once we've done those three things, we're in a good state to be able to actually draw out a use case diagram. All a use case diagram does is it maps the actors to the use cases via their interactions. So stop the video for a moment and have a think what might some functional requirements be for an ATM? Okay, so hopefully you've had a bit of a think. Uh, these are the ones that I came up with. I thought that the user should be able to withdraw cash, view their account balance, some deposit some cash maybe. Um, but also a staff member from the bank should be able to run some maintenance on the system as well. If a card gets stuck in it or something, you know, a, uh, some notes get lodged somewhere they shouldn't, um, that's part of it as well. And also there's a higher level thing here because we're dealing with money and private issues, all of these transactions must be secure. While the top three are, will actually appear as use cases in our example, number four and five won't necessarily but are still worth bearing in mind some from number four might appear depending on if we decide to include the kind of maintenance part of our system as well but five just means we will need security embedded in all of our other examples it's a core functional requirement even if it's not a use case so once we've done that, we need to identify the actors in our system. And actors can be a variety of different things. They can be external hardware, like a robotic arm. They can be external software. It could be like a money authentication system, or they can just be genuine human users. But they're identified, and we talk about them in terms of their role, rather than by their name. So rather than saying John, we would say a bank customer. Rather than saying the IP address 192.168.56.17, we would say, oh, the Visa authentication system instead. So here's the ones that I came up with. Um, I think obviously we'll have some customers that won't want to use the ATM. It could be a card holder, so someone who has an FPOS or a credit card, but might not be a Vic Bank customer. If you think about how ATMs work, um, we'll probably need some authorization system. So that will either be a credit card system or some internal bank system, and probably a maintenance operator of some description as well. Human actors in use case diagrams are depicted by stick figures and um, additional uh, automated systems like authentication systems are depicted by actors, um, a square, square boxes with the word actor written in them and the name of the case written there. And we can start to put these out in what's called a static context diagram. And they just show what are our actors, what are our systems, and how do they connect. Now this isn't so useful, but it's a great stepping stone to our use case diagram, which is going to be the topic of the next video.